Hey, cool cats. Hey, cool kids. It's Coach Scott. Let's talk about some chemistry. Let's do molecular geometry. Molecular geometry, well, that's sort of cool because we're going to, well, combine, um, we're going to combine what you learn in geometry and what you learn in chemistry. I actually have a purpose for geometry. So, and we'll play with this FET simulation in class, but molecules, they're three-dimensional objects, all right? They have shapes, and it affects their properties. So, in order to determine what the shape of the molecule used is, we're going to use something called VESPER. It stands for Valence Shell Electron Pair Repulsion Theory. And what it does, it accounts for the different shapes of the different molecules. So, according to VESPER theory, the molecule is going to adopt the shape or the geometry that's going to reduce the repulsion between the bonded electrons. Think about it. The electrons don't like each other. They want to be as far apart as possible. Okay, so on your formula sheets, you'll see this VESPER theory, so on and so forth, the VESPER numbers. And what the theory does, or the model does, it assigns a three-digit code to each molecular shape. And in order to determine this code, what we gotta do first? Well, we've been learning Lewis structures for a reason. We've been putting those lone pair there for a reason. We gotta draw a Lewis structure, right? So, the first digit of the VESPER number is the total number of electron domains around the central atom, all right? Again, we know what the central atom is because is center, all right? And then the electron, the domains around the other atoms, we don't worry about this. So, what does this mean? We're going to count the total number of bonded pairs and lone pairs. Now, double bonds and triple bonds will only count as one electron domain. So, we're not going to double up on the bonds. So, if you look right here, let's look at BF3. Boron would have one, two, three domains. Xenon and xenon tetrafluoride, well, there's one domain. It's a bonded pair. There's two domains, another bonded pair. Three domains, four domains, bonded pairs, and then five and six domains, those two lone pair are also domains. Ozone would have that's one electron domain, there's two, there's three around that central oxygen atom. So let's, let's see if I'm right. So I'm right, right? BF3, the first number would be three because that's the total number of electron domains around the central atom. Uh, xenon tetrafluoride would have six, ozone three. So that tells us something about the molecular shape. So, the first number will give you what the electron domain geometry is. And the shape of the molecule includes all, including all the bonds and the lone pairs. All right, so two atoms, or one atom and a lone pair around the central one, will form what we call a linear shape. The bond angle would be 180 degrees, okay? because they're pushing apart, right? Those two, the two uh, uh, um, exterior atoms, they're pushing each other apart as far as they can, but they're attracting each other. So that's going to be a linear shape. If we have three atoms, or lone pairs, around a central one, it's going to form a trigonal planar shape, flat shape, and the bond angles will be 120 degrees. Why? Well, three parts of a circle, 360 divided by three. Ooh, we're learning geometry. There's a reason y'all take that class. That's going to have an angle of 120 degrees, as far apart as possible. So, if we have four atoms, or and or lone pairs around the central one, it's going to form what we call a tetrahedral shape. And their angles will be 109.5 degrees. That's what a tetrahedron looks like. If we've got five, five atoms or lone pairs around the central one, 
they're going to form a trigonal bipyramidal shape with bond angles of 120 and 90 degrees. Okay. And again, we're talking about the electron domain geometry. If we have six atoms that are along parallel central one, it's going to form an octahedral shape. And again, their bond angles are going to be 90 degrees. All right. Now, the second digit of the Vesper number is the total number of bonding domains around the central atom. First one, the electron domain. Second, the bonding domains. All right. And around the other elements, totally irrelevant. We don't need to worry about this. Okay, so the number of single, double, or triple bonds, we count them as one. So the second number is just the number of bonds around the central atom. So by looking here, this would be a one, two, three. All right, the first number was a three. The second number will also be a three. That means there's three bonded pair around that central atom of boron. <coughs> Xenon tetrafluoride is going to have a one, two, three, four. So if you recall, the first number was six because those two lone pairs count as electron domain, but the bonded domain would only be four. So that would be six, four. Now, now around the ozone, remember the first number was a three. Well, we're only counting the bonded domains. Again, the double bond counts as one. That would be two. So that would be three and two. And that's what we get. There's a reason I'm a teacher. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's going to be their numbers. And the, so those numbers actually mean something. The third digit is the number of lone pair around the central atom. Okay, think about it. The first digit is the sum of the second and the third digits. Right? So that's a pretty good little check. So again, this was three, three, whatever the third number is. You had three electron domains. You've got three bonding domains. So the second, the last number, the third number would be three. Now the first number here was six. So the second number was four, the number of bonded domains. The third number would be, there's two long pairs, so that would be two. That would be a six, four, two. First number here was three. Second number was one, two, so of course that's going to be a one. It has one lone pair. Got it right. Okay. So, we've got the Vesper number for each molecule. We can look at it, and we look, 330, it's going to be trigonal planar. So once you draw that Lewis number, or the Lewis diagram, and you're able to count the bonded pairs and the lone pairs, you can get the number and figure out what the shape actually is. Woohoo! yay. So like uh, xenon tetrafluoride, that's going to be 642 square planar. That's the molecular geometry shape. Okay. BF3. Let's see. That's the trigonal planar. There we go. Xenon tetrafluoride, the molecular geometry would be a square planar. We'll talk about the molecular geometry in a bit. So... <coughs> Let's move from the electron, do electron domain geometry, okay, to the molecular geometry. So the electron domain would have a different shape than the molecular shape. Those lone pair, remember I told you when we started this, they do something. Those electrons are pushing the other parts away that will affect the geometry. So for a linear molecule, all right, there is only one molecular geometry for two atoms and our lone pairs around a central atom. All right, so that's going to be linear, or the Vesper number would be 220, two bonded domains. Now, for trigonal planar, molecular geometry, we've got two molecular geometries for those. So we've got three atoms and our lone pair around a central atom. 
So the trigonal planar, okay, happens if all the domains are bonded. You take a circle and divide by three. It's 120. Now, we'll have a bent if one of the domains is a non-bonding pair because these, think about it, these right here, those lone pair are going to have more influence. They're going to push those two atoms further together. So the angles are going to be a little different, all right, because those, un those lone pair are more strongly repel repelling, all right? So that's going to shrink the bond angle. All right, now let's look at tetrahedral. And so we've got three geometries. If we have four atoms and our lone pairs around the atom. So let's look at these. A tetrahedral, that's like CH4 methane. We've got a model of that in class. Okay, if they're all bonded, you're going to have an angle of 109.5. And there's the Vesper number. Or if we have a lone pair and three bonded pair, okay, will be trigonal bipyramidal is what we call it. And their angles are going to be 107. Now, if we have a two atoms bonded pair, or excuse me, bonded domains and two lone pair, those two lone pairs are going to push a little further, and it's going to really shrink that angle between the two atoms to where it's 104.5. Looks a whole lot like, was that dihydrogen monoxide? And that's why water has the shape it does. So, we also have trigonal bipyramidal molecular geometry. If we've got, there's four different molecular geometries, if we have five atoms, or lone pairs around the central atom. All right. So if we have five bonded pairs, we got trigonal bipyramidal. If we have one lone pair and and four bonded pair, we have what we call seesaw. And I'll we'll throw some shapes and see them in the class. Or if we have two lone pair, three bonded pair, we have what we call T-shaped. Okay, those are going to be 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Or we could have a linear shaped molecule if we have two bonded pairs and three lone pair. Okay. Now we're getting to the fun part. If we've got, th there's three different molecules or molecular geometries. If we've got six atoms and our lone pairs around that central atom, we're in these expanded octet. We could have octahedral, okay? It's a pretty cool shape. It's like two pyramids on top of each other, or one pyramid on top of the other one. We have one lone pair. We'll have a square pyramidal. Cool. Looks like a pyramid. Or if we have two lone pairs, they're going to be on each side. Then we'll have a square planar, a flat molecule. Cool. So, how many electrons domains does uh, CH4 have? Of course, it has four. I'm going to give you that one. What's the electron domain of CH4? Well, that'll be a tetrahedral. If you look at your sheet, you can figure it out. How many electron domain does H2O have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. The correct answer, of course, is A. Four. What's the electron domain geometry of H2O? Let's look. Should be, it is, it's tetrahedral. Now those are how the electron domains are. So they're counted as the, the four domains. Now what's the molecular geometry? Well, that's going to be, let's see if that's what the next question should be. If we can go on. Oh, I'm moving my little yellow thing. Okay. How many electron domains does CO2 have? One, two. It's only two. So that, of course, would be linear. What's the electron domain geometry of CO2? Well, it's linear. We'll check. It's linear. Only way it can be. Okay. 
So we can, we'll practice some of this in class, okay? And uh, yeah, this is a high level subject, but it's one that everyone can do, especially if you have the, uh, the little sheet with the, uh, the Vesper numbers, you can figure out what's going on. And again, if you can visualize this and think about it as we get into reactions, the geometry of those molecules will affect how things do what they do. So I think it's sort of cool. So anyway, guys, this is Coach Scott saying uh, bon voyage for now. Have a great day, and we'll see you on the on the on the on the re well whatever. We'll see you on the replay.